welcome back to your region at 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a uh, take two of the uh, existential fallacy uh, video part of this series. Apparently, we recorded this video entirely without sound last time. Oops. Okay. But the uh, what we're going to basically go through today is arguments of these three forms. No for all A or B, no C or A, therefore no C or B. E. All A or B, all A or C, therefore all C or B. E. All X or Y, all Z or X, therefore some Z or Y. This is probably the easiest to kind of grasp at, why this is actually a logical fallacy. Because you're, I in this case, you, you have to ask yourself, what happens if one of these two classes, this Z, X, or Y, doesn't actually have any members, or if there's no, there, it's an empty class, or, or there, it's something that doesn't actually exist. Uh, you're making a statement about things that don't exist, and then suddenly the conclusion is false, and the premises are true, so the argument itself becomes invalid. Your argument is invalid. Yeah. So, I in general, uh, this didn't uh, seem to be a, a invalid argument until about the early 20th century. Uh, Bertrand Russell and others uh, realized that uh, there's really a difference when you're talking about things that exist versus things that don't exist, uh, as far as whether or not true, true premises will lead to a true conclusion, i.e. the argument is in fact valid. So if we're using purely Aristotelian logic, i.e. if we're only dealing with classes uh, that are assumed to exist, um, then it is valid, and you can use it in a valid form, or either of these three in a valid form uh, by doing so. However, there's a lot of situations where you're you're not necessarily going to be able to make that assumption. Uh, and so, if you can again, if you can prove that all classes are non-empty, uh, which we'll talk a little bit about in the next video, as far as how you can talk about entire groups of things, uh, then that's also okay. Uh, but if, if you can't, if, if it's possible that they can be empty, uh, or that they cannot exist, then uh, you have to be careful that you don't actually commit this. So, uh, here's an example to, to kind of make this clear. Uh, quote, everyone in the room is pretty and smart, therefore there's a smart person in the room. So, that's pretty much close to this one here. So there's a you know smart person that's in this room. Um, well, it's not necessarily true that there's anyone in the room. So if there's nobody in the room, there isn't really a smart person in the room, even if, strictly speaking, you could say everyone in the room is pretty smart. That's that's kind of the, 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 the logical splitting point where we're kind of get we're, we're interested in looking into here. Uh, because technically that that is true, uh, where everyone in the room is pretty smart. You can view this in, in Boolean logic as being true. Nevertheless, the conclusion here is false. So it's not a valid argument, at least when dealing with the possibility that the room is empty. Another example, trespassers will be prosecuted. Therefore, some of those prosecuted will have been trespassers. Again, if there's no trespassers, then there will have not been any people who are prosecuted who will have been trespassers. So the conclusion will have been false. And in fact, with especially if you have like a little warning sign saying, uh, you know, no trespassers, trespassers will be uh, prosecuted. If we're viewing things in this context, then technically the uh, trespassing, if it never happens, then the the prosecution will never happen. And so it's kind of like it's setting itself up for this kind of self-defeating uh, situation where the sign itself isn't true because trespassers will be valid or will be uh, prosecuted will never actually happen, because if nobody trespasses, nobody gets prosecuted, so technically that part is basically false. So, uh, it, it's, it's kind of setting up this, this kind of paradox here. Uh, all uh, unicorns are horses, all horses uh, are on Earth, therefore all things on Earth are horses. Again, that makes no sense at all. Totally invalid uh, form of ar argument. Um, and so on and so forth. So but basically, the, the important thing to note is that if you're making these these uh, kinds of arguments where you're, you're 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 comparing different classes, make sure that the what you're talking about actually exists. 
Uh, because if you make a conclusion based on that, and the class, one of the classes doesn't exist, it's entirely possible that you're going to mislead yourself by your argument. Uh, so, uh, hopefully that's a clear enough um, description. Yeah. Actually, with the unicorn one, yeah. is that not like calling all orcas a uh, all orcas um, dolphins? Due to the fact that unicorns would be a subspecies of a horse. Right. So, uh, again, it's it's the 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 all, all orcas being dolphins. I'm not sure the relationship be between workers and dolphins. Uh, I, I'm not it's sure if there's there's a relationship there or not. Yeah, there is. It's not killer. It, killer whales are actually not related to whales, but that's a side note. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Makes sense. Yes. Okay. So, uh, again, any more questions from the audience? No. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see you in the next video, and hopefully you enjoy.